Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to see you all. Happy, what day is it? Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> um, I want to take just a minute, give people a couple more minutes to get here. Uh, in the meantime, something that I'm going to encourage throughout this event, because yes, it's virtual, and yes, I'm going to be doing my, most of the talking. However, I would really like to give everyone the opportunity to truly use it as a networking chance. So if you haven't already, hit up the chat box. And then I see everybody saying hello from LA, hello from Ottawa. I love this. Definitely, A, tell us uh, where you're from. And also, really important, what are you looking for in a job, in networking, from this event? Share that information. One thing that I think is very effective for anybody who might be looking for a job right now is to find what I call kind of a peer mentor, somebody who's also looking for work. So if you can find somebody who's looking for a similar type of role or for work in a similar industry or who's also trying to make um, a crazy career change or anything like that, you want to find someone who's in kind of a similar boat. That way you can share resources, you can schedule time to check in with one another on a weekly basis and provide each other with moral support. I've always found it to be something super helpful um, in the job search process. Whenever I'm working with a client, I always recommend also finding that other person be besides who's ever coaching you or working with you to truly act as more of what I call the mentor or the peer mentor, peer job seeker. So definitely keep that in mind. Also, you never know, there might be somebody who's just entering the workforce and is looking to talk to other people um, who are in an industry they're trying to break into, or even someone who's trying to make a change later in life. This is a great opportunity to find somebody. And I know one of the things we're gonna talk about is that often networking feels like you have nothing to give, that you're asking for help. It feels like you're almost begging or imposing on people. That leaves a really bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. And it really has to do with how are you positioning yourself and how are you approaching networking in the first place? So if you do find somebody who's looking for something that's different or that you could provide some insight on, you can both give as well as get support. So I think that's a really great um, way to segue into our event. Uh, bear with me. Um, well, one thing I wanted to ask is, and is my audio okay? Can somebody give me a thumbs up or it sounds good or you are garbled and echoey uh, just because it's tech and I always get concerned. So if someone could just give me a thumbs up and let me know, yes, it sounds fine or no, Amanda, please check your audio. I'm loving this. I'm loving, yay, everyone can hear me. Thank you. Um, I'm loving all of this information that's going out. And keep in mind, you can also send chats to individuals not just the whole team. So if you do see someone, you're like, oh my gosh, we're actually in the same area or we're looking for the same stuff or I have experience in that area. This is a great way to start making some of those connections and then bringing them into a more, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one basis after an event like this. So I'm going to fire up the slides and start this presentation. I want to thank everybody for joining me today and taking time out of your busy schedules. I know everything is crazy for so many of us out there to go through this uh, this presentation with me. Now, my hope is that I'm gonna give us a good chunk of time at the end to do Q&A. So I actually tried to keep my slides shorter than usual. <laughs> um, for any of you who have gone to these before, you know um, succinct is not my thing. I do have the gift of the gab, but I would really like to provide a bit more time uh, within our presentation today. So without further ado, um, let me figure out how to get to the next slide. How about we do that, guys and gals? There we go. Hello, and thank you for joining me. Um, for those of you who have never done one of these before or we haven't had a conversation of any sort, my name is Amanda Augustine. I am a certified professional career coach and resumator, and I am also a... Uh, uh, resume writer, and I am also uh, the resident career expert for Talents Inc.'s suite of brands, and that includes top resume, top CV, as well as top interview. Um, I wanted to make a point in this presentation to provide you with links to both top resume as well as top CV, because I did take a look at the registrants 
uh, before the event. And I noticed that a lot of you are overseas, that we have people all over the globe. So I want to be very clear. If you're looking for a job in a country where they typically require a resume as the primary document, then you want to head to Top CV for both advice and services. And if you are looking for work in a country um, where they primarily accept a CV, then you want to go to topcv.com. In both instances, if you go to those links slash job search Amanda, you will find um, both options to request a free evaluation of your resume or CV, as well as discounted pricing if you decide to purchase any of their services. Um, so please keep that in mind. If you're not too sure which one you should be using, Jenna, I hate to throw this on you from the get-go, but if we could pull out one of the articles, either from Top CV or Top Resume, that talks about um, how they vary from country to country, um, that would be, I think, really useful for a lot of people to know what type of document they should be tailoring for. That said, of course, we're here to talk about networking. Um, so I'm gonna hop right past this sucker. Before I get into the whole networking thing, just a few things I wanna put out there because I know this is, gets asked quite a bit. This webinar will be recorded and it will be emailed to everybody who has registered for the event. So no worries, if you're on here, you will receive a copy of it. It will also be available from the Top Resume site. So if you go to Career Advice and look for webinar replay, you will find uh, an article within the next 24 hours and this video will be embedded in it. We already started doing this, but I did want to encourage anybody who's just joined us, please get friendly. Introduce yourself in the, cat func in the chat function. Uh, your name's already displayed, but your location, what type of role you're going for, what is your next career move, and, and why did you join this event? I think a lot of people are looking to expand their network. Some are trying to improve their networking strategy, but this is a great way to also just get an understanding of perhaps there's someone with a very similar interest and you could partner up um, or contact one another after this event. If you want to ask a question to me and or my moderator, Jenna Mantis. Jenna is my right-hand lady. She is fantastic, um, an amazing um, team member. Uh, she is going to be handling a lot of that chat back and forth. If she can answer it in the midst of the event, she will, but she will also hold some of them for me for Q&A at the end. So if there is a question you'd like to ask um, in the chat functionality, you can either switch to Q&A mode or you can type your question and then check the box so that the um, a red Q appears and that designates it as a question. And then rule of thumb, as my mother always taught me, please be kind and courteous. We're all here to both give and receive support. I know a lot of people have been going through a lot of crazy things in the last 12 plus months. So please be kind. Um, and without further ado, let's get into the meat of things. I have uh, included a poll here, and I just like to get a sense of who's here, who's listening, so I get a better understanding of as I'm going through this material, I can make sure that I hit upon pieces of information that are most interesting to who's here. So if you could just take a moment, and let me see, I can start this poll. Let me see. Let's publish it. There we go. If you could please answer this question, are you unemployed and seeking a role in a similar company? Unemployed, and this includes also if you're fresh out of school, so no problem there. Um, and interested in breaking into a new industry or career, or are you employed and looking for a change? I just wanna give it a minute because I'd love to get a sense of who's here um, and how drastic of changes are people looking to make when it comes to their career? Because obviously some of the advice will differ if you're trying to break into a new industry or career versus move up in a similar space that you've already been working in. Uh, if it's something you worked in a long time ago and you're trying to get back into it, I'd still say that's a similar role. That's fine. Uh, maybe you took a break. I know a lot of people who uh, either voluntarily or involuntarily uh, stopped working for a while and now we're looking for changes. So just like to get a sense, I'm gonna give it uh, 30 more seconds and see what everybody's up to. I put other on there um, and really that was more about if, if you're hearing you're like, well, I'm not really looking for work because obviously that's what I focused on with these poll questions. Alrighty, three, two, one, let's get a sense of what we got going on here. So it seems like a pretty 
a, a pretty fair mix. It's almost split half and half between looking for a similar role versus breaking into a new industry or career. But I do see that there's a little bit more towards new industry and career. So I will make sure if there's anything different that talks specifically about that, um, that, that we're um, working on that. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate it. Um, because I know so many of you are looking for work, I figured it would be worth sharing that our parent company, Talent Inc., is actually on a massive hiring spree at the moment. Um, we're currently only hiring U.S. citizens, so I apologize for those who are international at the moment. Everybody has to be based in the United States or, frankly, US, um, a U.S. citizen. But these roles are available. The senior marketing analyst role can be anywhere in, within the United States. The same with the manager of software engineering. A lot of the others, I think it, it truly depends. If they find the right fit, we are tending to become more location agnostic in the sense meaning that uh, you don't have to be in our hub, which is uh, New York City. So most certainly check out the listings. This next slide gives you the URL you need, talentinc.com backslash corporate dash careers. If you go to that site, you will find all of our corporate positions as well as the job descriptions, the requirements, and a place to apply for them. So I figured that was worth sharing with everybody since so many of you are looking for work. We do have a ton open. All right. This is what we're here to talk about today. And these are the areas that I promised I would touch upon when we advertise the event, and I'm going to do my best to hit all of it and still give us some time for Q&A. So debunk some common networking myths, explain what's changed and truly what hasn't. And there are some components that really haven't changed. Share some new tools and platforms, which I will be the first to say I am not sponsored by any of them. I have no association with them besides the fact that um, myself and my colleagues have been playing with them and using them and just getting a sense of what's out there so that you have some new avenues to pursue. Uh, and then answer your questions live. Okay. I show this slide in nearly every presentation, probably every presentation, because I do think it is a very nice, easily digestible breakdown of the job search process. And as so many of us are looking for work today, this is something to keep in mind. You may leverage each of these differently. There may be certain rules that apply based on what your goals are, but this is the typical process that everybody goes through. And networking is considered one of those three main ways that you identify job leads when it comes to the job search. Of course, that's not all networking's for. We should always be networking. But when it comes to your job search, it, it takes on increased importance. So much so, uh, this, if you look at the research out there, about 70%, it's estimated 70 to 80% of open positions are not published online. So if you're not talking to people and you're not getting a sense of what companies are hiring for, you're never going to know about these positions, either because they're offering them to internal candidates or they're just frankly not publishing them. And when you think about how many are being published, there's such a slew that are not. So yes, networking becomes really important if you want to find what they call the hidden job market. Also, and this is a stat we, we uh, share quite frequently, you're 10 times more likely to land the job, not just get the interview, but land the job when your application is accompanied by a referral. Why? Because it's someone vouching for you. It's somebody who's willing to put their reputation on the line and say, yes, you should, you should look at this candidate for this role. Um, you're also more likely to be a cultural fit because the person knows you. So all in all, recruiters love referrals, job seekers love referrals, but to get those referrals, Networking. And obviously, networking's changed quite a bit since you're not going to those big professional events um, as frequent anymore at the moment. So let's talk about the myths that are out there, because I think there are a lot of myths. And frankly, I think a lot of them come down to a misconception as to what networking is and, and really how we should define it, what's considered good networking. So let's kind of slide through these. OK, first. Um, there is this misconception that you can't or you shouldn't network during a recession. Big fat myth. Big fat myth. What else do we hear? Well, we hear networking is slimy or it's imposing or it's transactional. And I'm here to tell you 
It is if you're approaching it from the wrong way. Um, networking should never feel like you're begging for help. You want to uh, approach it with a very open mind because there are ways for you to also provide value. There are ways for you to also make it a two-way street. Um, yes, it's harder when you're suddenly in job search search mode. So you're like, I have to network now. Um, because in the grand scheme of things, we should be networking all the time and kind of building these relationships. That said, your network is supposed to be this group of people that you mutual that have mutual trust, that there's a relationship that you're building. And when you have a relationship that you're building, people are more likely to offer support. So it doesn't feel like you're just begging for things. Um, there's a really great quote I found on Forbes that said something to the effect of networking isn't transactional, it's relational. It's relational. Um, let's see if I can say that fast, right? Um, and I think that's really important to keep in mind um, because if you think of it as relationship building as uh, and less of a transaction, um, it's more palatable for the people who are not really into it. Um, it has to be done in person to be effective. Nope. <laughs> Most certainly not, um, especially when you consider how much things have gone virtual now. Um, you should only network with people in your profession. Um, that's a big nope. And we're going to talk about that one a lot because I think when someone's looking at, oh, I'm looking for a new career path or I'm trying to pivot or all my friends are also laid off. How in the world am I going to, um, you know, go to these professionals and ask for help? You have to remember that strangers and those that don't know you or don't have a relationship with you, um, it takes more for them to put themselves on the line because you have to build that trust. Um, so, yes, while identifying people in your profession is going to be great, having relationships with those people already, of course, you're going to prioritize those contacts. You're going to prioritize people you've worked with, you've managed, who've managed you or mentored you, people that you may have mentored or supervised in the past, as well as vendors, um, clients, things of that nature. Anybody who's in your profession, if you're maintain, you know, staying the course and maintaining there, yes, you want to prioritize those if you already have those relationships. But if you're looking to break into a new industry, your first step doesn't have to be to spam mail a bunch of strangers on LinkedIn. Um, that's not as helpful, to be quite honest. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what that means and, and, and why it's changed, particularly now as to how you should approach the networking strategy. Um, and then I've already touched upon this, but network only necessary when job seeking. We know that's not true. That's kind of when everybody kicks it into high gear, right? And that's a challenge. But at the end of the day, networking is about building relationships. So we always want to be building relationships so that when we do need help, we can call upon them and it doesn't feel like we're trying to suddenly make friends and then ask for things. I think this is important to look at because if you look at these definitions, and these are two different ones. I found one on, I think, Oxford Dictionary, and the second one is from Investopedia. I thought they were very interesting because they touch upon some really important points when it comes to networking. And if you remind yourself in the back of your head, that this is what you're doing and that, yes, ideally, you're ultimately hoping it leads to a job offer down the line, that there are other things that are important that, that you got to keep in mind when you are approaching networking in general. So, yes, it's making contact and it's exchanging information. But I love this idea of mutually beneficial relationships. You're cultivating relationships. And anywhere you look for a definition on networking, that's what they keep harking back to. Right. What I love is something that's really important is a common profession or a special interest. I think you should never discount your personal interests and passions, things that have absolutely nothing to do with what you're trying to pursue now. Um, have you been involved in a nonprofit? Um, are you active even virtually with your kids, whatever club it is, you know, even if it isn't face to face right now, what are you very interested in? What are you doing? Um, what do you enjoy doing that has nothing to do with your profession? Because if you find somebody and you have a shared interest, regardless of what it is, you're more likely to more easily connect with that person. And I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind is because we always assume that we're trying to like have these, you know, really unnatural conversations with random strangers and hope for help. And yes, in some instances, you're most certainly going to do that or it's a friend of a friend of a friend, right? But 
Start with your inner circle. Start with people that you already know. Also, if you're going to join a group, they don't all have to be professional. Join something that really interests you, that really excites you, that you really love. Even if it's a Facebook group on um, Confession, love Outlander. Big fan, definitely part of an Outlander group. Um, also, yes, I am one of those people who who freaking got a Peloton. I would like to admit that we got it years before the craze. But anyway, the working moms of Peloton love that group. Why? They ask questions. They, they have back and forth about things that are work related and everybody's in a different profession, but people are willing to connect and reach out to one another. It's a great opportunity to identify people where you could form a relationship with that you don't know yet, but you have at least one thing in common and it's based on what that group's about. Okay. That's my rant for the moment. I'm going to get off my soapbox and move to the next slide. Okay, so what is still true when it comes to networking? Um, whenever you are approaching a job search and you're identifying what you're going to do to your resume and LinkedIn profile, um, who you're going to talk to, what events you're going to pursue, what networking activities are you going to do, what recruiters are you going to contact, it all comes back to what's my job goal. So the clearer you can make that job goal, the easier this process will be. Why? It's going to help you to evaluate your existing network and identify the people that you should be reaching out to and reconnecting with sooner rather than later. And those people tend to fall into two categories. It's going to be somebody who works for the industry company in a field that's of interest to you, your current target, or it's the social butterflies of your group, the people that you have a relationship with, but you also know they happen to know a lot of people. Those are the ones that you want to really reconnect with first before you start adding new contacts to the mix, because they're the ones who are most likely in a position to help you, either because they can pass on information, they can provide you with resources, or they can, um, they can introduce you to someone who can. Does that make sense? I'm going to just look at the, the chat real quick and make sure. Does this make sense? Everyone's on the same page. Let me know if I'm going too slow or too fast. I know I'm a talker. Um, what's still true? Participating in relevant events. Yes, it's now more virtual than before, but that doesn't mean that you can't be doing that. Researching and approaching new contacts. Yes. Um, but we're going to talk about there's kind of a caveat to that at the moment. And then setting up informational interviews. Um, if we have that link or you can grab that one, Jenna, that's one that I really like. Um, I think we have one or two articles that are specifically on informational interviews. One's an Ask Amanda and one is written by um, one, of, one of our writers. Uh, if you're not familiar with informational interviews, they are the cornerstone of networking, in, in my humble opinion. I think they are often overlooked and underutilized, and they are incredibly, incredibly important, especially when you're looking to make any sort of change. So maybe you've been unemployed and you're trying to get back into the workforce, or um, you're trying to pivot either to a new industry, a completely different line of work, uh, whatever it may be, informational interviews are kind of key. So the premise of an informational interview is that you, the job seeker, are going to be interviewing others who contain some sort of insight, pearls of wisdom, knowledge on um, a company, an industry, or a field that you're really interested in. So say you just graduated and you're trying to figure out, I wanna do marketing. Well, there are a million different disciplines within marketing, and you're not too sure what type you wanna do. You might start reaching out to friends and family to see who do they know that's in marketing that would give you 10 minutes on the phone, 10 minutes on FaceTime, very short period of time. You always ask for just a little because you want to be very respectful of other people's time, especially now, um, but ask for their pearls of wisdom. What do they know? What's the good, the bad, and ugly? What groups should you be following? Do, are there any publications you should be reading or subscribing to? What is going to help you figure out the right path? Again, it's a lot about um, basically, as it sounds, uh, interviewing for information. You're never saying, can you give me a job? It's so unlikely that they can just do that. And you'd rather ask them questions where they can give you positive, affirmative responses. So you're looking for, is there something I should be reading? Is there an online, you know, an e-course free that I could, that I should be taking to, you know, round out. This is what I know 
Um, this is what I have been doing. I really want to break into this field. Where do you think my, my skill set would match up? What type of role do you think I'm most qualified for? Are there any gaps in my experience that you believe I should try and fill? Um, something I haven't really touched upon here, and, and it dawned on me that for those of you who are maybe in very senior level roles and you're looking for kind of that next level of networking, I would also look to building your, um, well, honestly, this is for anyone. I take it back. I think um, this is a great time to start scouting for your board of advisors or your board of directors, just like a company may have a board of directors that are helping um, uh, advise that organization on the different moves it makes. This is not a bad time to look for multiple people that you really connect with that may be able to offer different pearls of wisdom. So just putting that out there. Okay, what's changed? So we, we touched on a bit of what's here, but what's changed about all of this? Well, I found this quote and I thought it, it was pretty important to share. I would assume you all agree or in, at, at some level agree with this because you're here and you're listening to me. So, um, you know, we know networking is important. It's always been an important part of this of a job search strategy, frankly. Not everybody has always wanted to do it, but I think now it, it's more of a necessity than anything else. So how do we do it well? Well, here, here's what's changed. It's the norm, right? We've always had video and phone and not always, but we, you know, it's been around for a while. Video conferencing, FaceTime, Skype, all that, you know, phones, calls, texts, and social media. They've always been around, but now it's very much the norm. And for those of you that are a bit more introverted and the thought of going to an event makes you break out in hives, this is your time. <laughs> <laughs> this is your time to network because you don't have to go and talk to a million people. You have a very valid excuse. You may not be allowed to where you live right now. Um, and if you are allowed to, you can still say you're concerned about COVID and you can stay at home and still digital network because there are so many more opportunities now available. But one thing to keep in mind, your digital presence has now taken on much greater importance and value because it's not just about how they see you and how you present yourself in person. They're going to look you up. They're going to see you online first. They're going to see your LinkedIn profile, your social media profiles. So I think it's really important if you haven't already, Google your name. Google your name as it would appear on your resume, your LinkedIn profile, whatever materials you plan to use as part of your job search. Google your name and see what pops up. And then determine, do I need to hide that? Do I need to change it? Do I need to update it? Is it reflecting my current goals? When was the last time I overhauled my LinkedIn profile? Um, if I have updated my CV or resume to reflect my current job goals and the value I bring or my qualifications, does my LinkedIn profile match up with that? Are they telling the same story? They really do need to tell the same story. So keep that in mind. And if there are, we're going to get into a bunch of new tools um, and resources that are available. If you're creating a profile on those, you have to make sure that whatever you're saying there is lining up with what else they're going to find about you online. So something to keep in mind, if you haven't done it recently, put it on your to-do list for after this event, Google your name, see what pops up. Also, try and make a list of what job boards have you used that you may have uploaded a resume and created a profile. Um, I, I can't tell you how many people say, oh, recruiters call me, but it's always about jobs that make zero sense or I would have done five years ago. Chances are they randomly found something about you on an old job board and it hasn't been updated. So they have no idea that you've progressed in your career and that's all they went by. So be cognizant of where have you put out your resume or CV and if you're still going to use that site, update the information to make sure it reflects where you are today and what you're looking for and take down any of the ones that you don't plan to use. Um, again, digital presence, increasing importance. Um, one thing I will put out there is that if uh, you need help with your LinkedIn profile and or your resume or CV, that's something that both top resume and top CV can do for you. So if you don't want to attempt to do all this and you don't know what to write, um, they will 
they can just do a LinkedIn uh, makeover or they can write your resume or CV and also do your LinkedIn profile because they do kind of go hand in hand. It's actually easier when you do both together. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, I'm sure uh, Jenna will be able to throw up a link to that to give you um, a sense of where you can go to learn more about that. Okay, moving on. What else has changed? Uh, your personal relationships and what we call dormant contacts now take top billing. They're number one top priority. So what does this mean? Dormant contacts means somebody you had a relationship with in the past that maybe you just haven't really been in touch with in quite some time. Um, one thing we're finding during the pandemic is that people are reaching out to former colleagues, um, uh, personal connections, just random people that they haven't spoken to in a long time. People are checking in with one another, right? We're all in the same boat in a sense. We're all dealing with a lot of different stuff. There have been a lot of crazy things going on in the past God, more than 12 months at this point. Um, and so everybody's feeling the strain. So we are seeing a lot more people reaching out and just saying, how you doing? Haven't talked to you in forever. What's going on? Um, it takes just that little bit of communication to try and get it up and going and schedule a phone call, schedule a FaceTime or a Google meeting or a Skype or whatever, whatever appeals to you. But um, start reconnecting with those dormant contacts. And also prioritize the personal relationships. Now, this is something interesting. And I've always said include your friends and family when you're looking for a job. But you, you should. But as I noted in the myths, most people discount them because they're like, oh, my uncle knows nothing about what I do. My, my, you know, my nephew, my daughter, they, they have no sense of what's going on or, or what I'm pursuing or what it's like. They can't help me. They're in different industries. You know, they don't even understand what I do for a living. I've heard it all. I do get that. However, um, although you should most certainly be networking right now, we do understand that um, given, uh, you know, trying to handle virtual learning or homeschooling or, you know, taking care of your children and trying to do your job or there's a lot of things going on. People are juggling a lot of extra stuff right now. And so if you're going to reach out for help, Somebody who already knows you, who understands you, who has some sort of mutual trust, respect, there's a relationship. I mean, it could be your hairstylist. It could be your your pastor. It could be your best friend, your mom, your family, whatever it is. Start thinking of that inner circle, even if they have absolutely nothing to do with your career or the career that you now want to pursue and start talking to these people very clearly about what you're looking to do next. Um, just make sure that your career goals are well known. I am looking to move into this type of industry doing this, you know, and you may have, you may be very generic, but I'm looking to move from sales into marketing for a healthcare company. That's very specific. I get not everybody has it that clearly laid out. But if you have a good sense of what you're looking for and you make sure that every time you're talking to people that you've made sure that they're aware of what you're doing and maybe you're keeping them up to date with with how your job search is going. Yes, they may not be in your industry and yes, they may not even fully understand it. But I bet you 10 bucks they're more likely to say, you know what, I think let me introduce you to someone I don't know, but let me check. They might know something. Um, I think it's important that you explain what you're looking for because they can't help you if they don't know what you're looking for. They can't give you a job, but they might be able to put you into contact with someone who works at a company that you're really interested in or an industry that you're looking to break into. And that's really what you're trying to get from those relationships. Of course, your best friend's dad probably can't give you a job. However, they might be able to introduce you to somebody who has a really good understanding of what you're looking to do, or maybe the company that's your dream company was a client of theirs. You never know. And so I know I'm stressing it a lot, but I can't stress it enough that don't discount the personal relationships or those dormant contacts where, oh, but I haven't been in touch with them forever. Yes, you're looking for work, but guess what? So are a lot of people. And even if somebody you reach out to is also looking for work, the chances that you're both looking for the exact same role and you're both uniquely qualified for that exact same role are very slim. And so if, and if nothing else, even if you find yourselves both looking for work, they're shared resources. You now have somebody to check in um, every week with to keep you on track, to give you support when your family members may not really get it. 
So lots of things to keep in mind. Also, if the thought of reaching out to someone you don't know is absolutely terrifying, if you just don't, don't feel very comfortable putting yourself out there, it's a lot easier to talk to your inner circle of friends and family um, and you know reconnect with somebody you haven't spoken to in a while versus breaking out those cold emails and those cold connections. I hope that makes sense. Something else to keep in mind is that not only have a lot of jobs become location agnostic, meaning that companies are now opening up positions and saying, we'll hire anyone, you know, anywhere in the world or anyone from our country or whatever it might be. Um, so there are a lot more jobs that are now available outside of where you're living. But also that applies to networking opportunities, particularly when it comes to events. I mean, how many people you saw everybody's talking about where they're located? There are people all around the globe that are currently tuned into this, um, meaning that you don't have to be in New York City to go to this event. Um, there, there are events everywhere. And so that's something I really want to stress is that there are a lot more networking opportunities that are available. You don't have to be in Silicon Valley to go to events that were very specific to Silicon Valley because they're virtual. Um, so take advantage of that. Um, particularly if you may even be considering relocating because location is becoming less important in so many different ways when it comes to work. Um, not for everyone. I do understand that there are people who have to be back in an office and I truly get that, but there are a lot of professions. There are a lot of companies that said we're never going to be remote that are now like, mm, maybe we'll be remote. Maybe we don't have to be all in an office all the time. So food for thought. And with this switch to virtual in general, this whole everybody having to work from home for a while and being in lockdown, we are seeing so many new tools and resources um, popping up to help facilitate th those new connections. And so I want to go through some of those today because I think some of them are really cool and they're worth trying out. Try why not try something new? Um, before any networking event, connection, opportunity, whether it's an informational interview, uh, whether it's a webinar, whatever it is, there are certain things that you kind of always want to have prepared, um, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one or more of a group setting. One, what does your online presence look like? We already talked about this, but if you're talking to people and introducing them and you're like, oh, we're in the similar, they're going to Google your name. Let's make sure whatever they Google and it pops up, it's something that you want them seeing, that it accurately reflects who you are today. Um, I put a list of different, you know, video conferencing kind of tools that are out there today. No, you do not have to have all of these. You do not have to be an expert on all of them. However, you want to be familiar with them and test them out on your phone or on your laptop or whatever you may be using just to make sure that you know how to work them um, and that everything's working properly so that if um, you do end up having a Zoom with somebody or a FaceTime or a Google Hangout or a Skype. Um, you're not fumbling in, in the technology is not making you nervous. Get, get that out of the way. Test them all out. Uh, your resume and your LinkedIn profile. Because given that the overwhelming majority of you are looking for a job, you want to have both of these ready to go. Because somebody is going to ask you um, for your resume or your CV, um, and someone's going to look you up. Uh, and LinkedIn is still that kind of primary tool when it comes to that professional digital presence. So make sure you have those ready. For those of you who are, who are in creative spaces, I would add to this list, of course, your online portfolio or your blog. Anything that you're going to be using to show your portfolio that's digital, make sure that it's up to date. This is the time to really spend updating it, refining it, making sure it reflects who you are and, and the value you could offer to somebody. And then I say a list of uh, ob uh, your objective or your goals as well as a list of questions. I'm kind of covering two areas here. One is when you're going to go to an event or when you're going to talk to somebody, an informational interview, something like that, you want to have, you know, kind of what's your goal going into this conversation? What are you hoping to get out of it? Yes, you're hoping long term this leads to maybe um, a job lead or something like that, but that's never your initial goal. It's more about I'm trying to answer X, Y, Z questions. I'm looking for somebody to get to provide a list of companies I haven't considered or maybe a different type of role or, you know, perhaps it's an introduction to someone else or a recommendation for a certain resource or professional networking group or something like that. Have at least one or two goals kind of prepared. Maybe it's um, I want to I want to meet a couple different people and be able to set up 
conversations with them individually, you know, after the fact it's at a, at a later point in time. That's a great goal. If you're trying to expand your network and just meet other like-minded people, heck yes. Um, give yourself a goal that's something like that. The one thing I will say is that just like if you were going to an in-person event and you handed out your card to 17 people, that doesn't mean you networked. Um, so be really cognizant about the fact that the goal is not to do that. The goal is maybe to find a couple people that you want to connect with um, after the fact. I'd say offline, but obviously that's not relevant. Um, but you want to connect with after the fact and really start trying to cultivate, you know, a relationship. Here's a random um, example. So uh, my husband and I have, a, have an Airbnb um, uh, upstate. My husband was a ski patroller when he was younger. He always wanted to have a place up there. We found a place before the market went nuts. And we use it as an Airbnb. So it's up, you know, it offshoots some of our costs. Excellent. Um, we went, we were invited to do some Zoom call by Airbnb for hosts. And I think it was hosts anywhere in the U. I don't think it was really specific to a particular area. But everybody got on and said, oh, I'm, you know, chatted away, you know, typed it in. I, we're from our Airbnb is in this area of the country, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, I posted that out there. A guy private message. He goes, "Oh, my house is actually ten miles, you know, away. It's in the neighboring town. I don't think there's an Airbnb host council up here or something like that." And so we ended up privately messaging back and forth, got each other's email addresses, and then um, him and and my husband and I have been going back and forth on sharing best practices about how to, you know, make the most of our property. It, it's a silly example, but it just goes to show you it was a huge event where it was very much people presenting to us and we still ended up connecting with somebody. And, and then, of course, I connected with them on LinkedIn and we've been going back and forth. He's like, oh, I actually created this manual for myself. Would you like to see it? Because he'd been doing it for a while and we hadn't. So that was great for us. I think, you know, you could do something so similar in a job search setting. I found this great tool. Have you tried this before? This is an amazing salary calculator. This is where I do all my my compensation research. This is where I research the culture of companies, you know, whatever it might be. Um, so anyway, um, I won't go nuts on that, but I think that's something um, cool to keep in mind. And then if you're doing more of a one on one conversation, a list of questions to ask, even if it's just a, a couple, um, but a few questions um, so that you can really steer the conversation. Because as somebody who's been asked to do informational interviews or be the, in, the one interviewed in informational interviews quite frequently, Nothing ticks me off more than when I show up either in person or on a phone call and they're just expecting I'm going to lead the conversation. Uh, you know, you asked me to talk to you. So I assume you have a few questions prepared and I will be happy to go elaborate and go off of those. But I expect you to steer the conversation. That's something important to keep in mind, regardless of if the person you're interviewing is junior, senior or, or a similar level. Um, if you called the meeting, if you requested it, the other the person on the other end expects you to value their time and have a few few um, topics prepared as to what you want to talk about and what you want to ask. So important to keep in mind. Okay, here, this is a really good page. I would screenshot this one, but keep in mind, as I put on every slide, this will be recorded, so you can always look back on this later. But I tried to do a bit more of an exhaustive look at where else could you find digital networking opportunities. And I would also put out there, if anybody in this group knows of any, if you found something that's really working for you, or you don't see it on this list, or it's very, very good for your industry or your location or whatever it might be, please, please, please put it in the chat, share it, share the link, let people know what you like about it or what you dislike about it. Same thing with any of these groups. So LinkedIn and Facebook, they have groups. Um, Facebook also has events. Um, I really like the Facebook events or Facebook groups to be quite honest. I actually seem to use those more than LinkedIn these days when, um, and that's more for my personal interests. And as a result, I do, I am a part of a bunch of recruiter ones as well, but you know, there are a few that I really enjoy and I get a better sense of personality because people tend to let loose a little bit more there than say on LinkedIn. And so I think more genuine relationships, even virtual relationships have been formed. One thing I'll throw out here, I didn't list it here, 
but Twitter, my colleague Catherine swears by it. She starts following people that are have very similar interests. Um, she comments on what they're doing. She shares her own stuff and she forms these really great virtual relationships that she then takes into an actual off social media setting. So they get on the phone, they have a video chat, they email back and forth, but she fosters a lot of relationships by initially starting by building what we call, you know, social rapport uh, on some social media media platform and then moving it off uh, offline well off the social media platform so keep it in mind again don't get, discount the personal interests 10 times it's one of my absolute favorite ones it's global um, it's called 10 times because you're 10 times more likely to land a job with a referral mm, see, see what they did there um, it's one of my favorite resources I always offer it up industryevents.com is a new one I just found that one but I wanted to share it um, there are two places where you can go to get a list of professional associations in case you're looking for a professional association to join since they do have local chapters as well as um, virtual events um, directory of associations.com and then I bit lead this for you. So it's HTTP colon slash slash bit.ly slash wiki page international association. It's the wiki page for um, a list of international associations. I just wanted to put it out there. Something else to keep in mind is also look at people who are in the industry or field that really interest you. Look at their profiles um, on social media and see if they are promoting any events. They are promoting where they may be speaking or just attending. Look at the professional associations that their LinkedIn profile says they're a member of. That's a great, and same thing with the LinkedIn groups, you know, that gives you a really good um, short list of maybe these are ones I should check out because these people are involved in them. So that's a great way. And if I really want to talk to that person and I don't know them um, and I hate doing the whole cold email sort of situation, um, attending something where they're also in attendance gives you perhaps an opportunity to actually make some sort of contact with them before sending a more official love 10 minutes of your time. Can I please pick your brain sort of situation? Eventbrite meetup. These are also great. Um, uh, it's a mix of both employment stuff as as well as personal um, interests. So keep that in mind. Your alma mater, wherever you graduated from, go look and see if their career services or just their alumni chapters are putting on virtual events. Um, I've seen even my alma mater. I'm a I, I graduated from Marist College. Go Red Foxes. Um, I have seen such an uptick in the number of digital events they're promoting through email. So it's definitely something on the rise. Um, I would not be surprised at all if that's, you know, across the board. So definitely take a look. If you've never been active before, now's the time to maybe kind of check in and see what they have going on. And then here are three new, um, new uh, platforms that I want to share with you all. So we have Clubhouse as well as some copycats that are kind of in the process of being created, Upstream and Lunch Club. Uh, just checking because I know we're getting short on time. Okay. Clubhouse. So this is the link that will take you there where you can sign up to be kind of put on the list. It is invitation only. That said, it has over 10 million members. So we're finding that people, I, I mean, I've even seen this in the Facebook groups where it would nothing related to work at all, but I've seen people going, Hey, anybody here have a clubhouse invite I could use. I'm really looking to, to get on. People are just saying, yes, direct message me. I'll, I'll give me your direct message, me your phone number, email address, and I'll, I'll send you an invite. Um, it, they're definitely trying to make it feel very exclusive, but it's huge now. And chances are, you know, somebody who is part of clubhouse. So what in the world is it? It's the first one that that I've tried out um, of this group. It's known as a drop in audio chat. What the heck does that mean? OK, think of it as kind of like a Zoom meeting or a digital conference where you don't have to show your face. Nobody shows their faces. In fact, if you look at this picture here, you put up a profile picture, the really nice one that you like of yourself that maybe is on your LinkedIn profile. And that's what everyone sees. And then you get to create a very small um, profile for yourself. And then you drop into meetings or conversations where you listen. It's almost like listening to podcasts, but you get to interact with them. So I'm going to show you at least one more slide about this. So the first is obviously you get on the list, you solicit, you get your invitation, you sign up, you set up your profile. Then the idea behind it is that you can join clubs 
or enter clubhouses. One of them is, um, they're almost like topics, right? There are people, and it's, I mean, you can see the one here, marketing, branding, and business. Um, I'm part of one that um, airs at four o'clock Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday, where a bunch of recruiters get together and they talk about, you know, what struggles they're having or a topic that's really interesting to them. And, and they go off and they talk about their different strategies and the tools they're using and stuff like that. So for me and for my colleagues, really helpful. We're, we're hiring a lot of people. So it's great to hear other perspectives. You can find conversations about absolutely everything and anything. And it is very much a global experience. I can't tell you how many times I get notifications in the middle of the night because somebody, you know, overseas is doing something. <laughs> then gosh, I turned off that, that notification noise. Um, so things to keep an eye out for. You can join clubs or just join a, a, a discussion. Um, it could be related to the line of work you want to do, a specialization, an industry, topics outside of work, something you're just really passionate about, um, as well as conversations or that are going on with industry thought leaders in your field, recruiters that work for companies or they recruit for your area, um, and career experts. I, I personally haven't done my own conversation yet, but I've been getting involved in them. So a couple of things to keep in mind when you join a conversation, you can just you can be in the audience. You don't have to say or do anything. And in fact, no one will know if you leave the conversation. You can actually see on the thing. It says leave quietly. You can peace out and no one is aware of it. Um, you can uh, raise your hand and say, can you put me on stage? And then you can be put on stage by the host and you can ask a question or interact with any of the speakers, or you can be invited to, um, you can act, you know, be invited or you can request to be put on stage to actually act and, and share your two cents about whatever topic's going on. So again, an opportunity for you to share your expertise, to talk a little bit about yourself, as well as create a really meaningful conversation. And frankly, you could be doing it while you're driving. You could be doing it while you're making dinner and you have your AirPods in and your phone on the counter. That's the beauty of it, because as long as your audio is OK, it doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing because no one can see you. So I have to say this is this is something I've really enjoyed and I've, I found it really interesting. I've, I've literally done laundry and I'm, you know, interacting with recruiters and that sort of thing. So definitely something worth taking a look at. Um, and it's free, by the way. I should mention that. Um, alternatives that are in play. Twitter has been doing something called Twitter Spaces. They say it's been something they've been working on for over a year at this point. Um, so I bit lead a link that takes you to, um, you can follow Twitter Spaces on Twitter. And then um, there's that bit.ly link there that takes you to kind of, they, they wrote an article on like, this is what we do and this is how you do it and that sort of thing. Um, Spotify bought a new service and they're rebranding it as Green Room. I can't remember what it used to be called. It's not available yet to my knowledge, but this article that I bit laid for you all kind of gives you a sense of like where that's going. So you can keep an eye on it and see when it's coming out. Clubhouse has been so popular that all these other brands are trying to jump on the bandwagon. LinkedIn, Facebook, and Slack have all, you know, whether it's been leaked or they've officially said it, um, are building similar tools. LinkedIn says there's going to be different um, because of the professional angle. I'm interested to see what that looks like. But while they're not available today, Clubhouse is really the established one. Twitter's got something going on. These are things to be on the lookout for if you're looking for something new to try just because whatever you've been doing, you're bored of it, or frankly, it just isn't really your jam. It's not working for you. Okay, upstream. This is really cool. And if you join me for one of my earlier webinars, I think back in maybe September, we were talking about, you know, how, you know, different tools to help you kind of break through that really crowded job market. Upstream was one of those places that was posting jobs and offering kind of this community. Well, it's really evolved. It's taken on a whole different, you know, greater purpose. And it has a really large networking aspect to it now. So I think it's really cool. You can um, join professional communities. You can attend specific professional events. And what was really cool is this idea of office hours where there are people that put themselves out there and say, I'm giving out 10 minute slots and 15 minute slots. And you can you can ask for one and you can 
to have a, a video conversation with me um, and ask whatever you want to ask. So what a great way if you're really concerned about going up to somebody and asking for help or getting their advice or, um, you know, nobody in your existing network can, is really appropriate for an informational interview. You might be able to find someone on Upstream who literally has office hours and is saying, I'm 100% willing, I will give you this amount of time to chat with me. So really something cool to take a look at. And then the next slide I think is cool. There's a, a URL that you're gonna wanna write down. Oh, I lie, it's in two slides. I wanted to give you a sense of some of the communities that are out there. They have very um, industry specific ones, field specific ones. I just put in the word job to give you a sense of what shows up. I also put in the word career and saw some cool things. It gives you a sense of kind of what they've got going on and how big or small the groups are. Some are very large, some are much smaller. The one that I wanna focus on that I think is really cool, it's called helping and hiring. And so this is this was kind of where they originally started, but they said, if you have people, if you have friends looking for work, give them this code. So I wanna give you this code or this link, link.upstreamapp.com backslash, everyone can read, I'll let you do it. And then they basically said, you know, to use a code if prompted, the code is just the last part of that URL um, after the .com. So take a look at that. I thought this was so cool. I mean, I saw this and I actually sent it to our recruiters and said, hey, we should definitely make sure our jobs are on here so people know that they're available. I think this is a really cool opportunity. There's also, they actually give you an email address if you have any questions, um, but I would definitely check this out. And when I joined, there was no, no transaction, no money um, taking place. So it truly is, this one in particular, very much was developed from a place of good um, where they're genuinely trying to help and create some meaningful connections um, in the digital space. So I, I definitely suggest taking a look at this one. And then last is Lunch Club. So it's really interesting. Actually, a friend of mine turned me on to this um, and she was really excited about it. Basically, it's AI technology that they're using. You sign up, you give them, you know, where's your major hub? Though interestingly, it is digital. So I think it's just so if you want to meet in real life, you have that opportunity or you can you can opt for that. Um, they have lots of other locations, but these are kind of their main hubs or the main grouping of where people are. And then you have to select of this group here, you know, what are three of these things that you're interested in doing? And then it goes deeper and tell us about your experience and that sort of thing. It really, they're profiling you and and then they will set you up with one-on-one -on -one video meetings with, with random people who have a similar interest. So what a cool way to meet people that you probably wouldn't meet any other way. This is completely from using you know, all your connections. This is like, yeah, technology, put me in touch with somebody who wants to talk. Now, yes, for those who are introverts, even though it's one person and it's digital, I think it could be really unnerving, but it's worth giving it a try. I will say I have not given it a try yet. So I don't know if at any point they ask for money. I haven't gotten that far in the process on this one. My friend did it and she said it was a little awkward for the first one, but she's done a few of them now and she found them really interesting and, and really enjoyed it. And some people she hit it off with and some not so much but isn't that with all networking. So definitely something worth exploring if you're looking to kind of up your, your networking game. And then I'm not gonna really harp on this too much because I do wanna answer questions, but um, the rules of engagement, whether it's virtual, whether it's in person, you know, come prepared to whatever you're going to, do your research, whether it's an event, a speaker, or your, an informational interview, anything like this, whatever you can do ahead of time to prepare yourself, you'll feel more confident about the conversation. Um, it, for me, that's also having questions to ask if you're the one who requested a meeting. Have some sort of goal in mind. And also when you're talking to people, be very clear on your career goals if you're looking for work. Uh, listen, if not as much, if not more than you speak. As, as I was always told, you have two ears and one mouth, follow the ratio. Um, if it is an informational interview, you ask for information, not a job. If a job can follow, great. But again, networking is building those relationships and seeking out resources that ultimately lead you to that job. So I know this is digitally networking your way to a job. Um, the emphasis here is you're building relationships so that people want to help you. And yes, if someone is in a position to tell you about a job offer or refer you to a company, of course they will. But you have to build those relationships and kind of build that network in. And that's what I really want to help you accomplish. Um, 
when it comes to reciprocation, I think so many people think that they don't have anything to add because they're in the job hunt or that sort of thing. And that's nonsense, frankly. It's silly. Think about all the information you're learning as you're researching, as you're attending events, as you're looking at job openings, as you're, you know, all that sort of stuff. There's a lot there. Also, everyone assumes that what you give, the value you add has to be in some way tangible. And that's not true. Gratitude. Gratitude is value. Gratitude is reciprocation. A genuine thank you. A check in months after somebody helped you with something to let them know where you're at or to thank them for how much their help ha has benefited your search. That's a big deal. It's also as simple as you find out they're really into X, Y, and Z and you learn about a new documentary and you share it with them. Or you find out that they're a foodie and there's this really cool restaurant that that's now open or is offering takeaway or something like that or a recipe. I mean, think of it that way. It's, it doesn't have to be something big and it doesn't have to be professionally related. So keep that in mind. I always um, harp on that. OK, questions. It's a lot. I finished at three on the dot. Dang it. <laughs> but I will definitely stay on and answer questions. So I'm going to go. Um, to the chat and see, Jenna, where do I go to get the questions from you? I'm going to, let's see, I'm loving, loving this with people sharing their LinkedIn profile because what a great way and then you're not putting out your email address. Love that, love that, love that. Thank you all. Um, You know, oh, you sent them directly to admin. I'm not seeing them though. They're not there. Oh, send to admin only. Nope. Chat. Sorry, all. We have new technology. So you can see it's it's working really well for me. Um, Oh, I love this. I love all the interconnections. You guys are making me so happy. I'm sorry, Jenna, can you share a couple via via uh, Slack? Because I'm okay. Oh, I'm really feeling the George says I'm really feeling the age factor with all this tech talk going on. Oh, George, honestly, it's not as bad as you think. I, t I taught my mother how to do it. And she's in her mid 70s. So I promise you it's not as bad as you think it is. But yes, there is some of that technology that that's a challenge. And I do get that. Um, here's the thing. What a better way to use your network? Who do you know who feels more comfortable um, using technology that could maybe help you? And yes, it is more challenging when you when you uh, when technology is daunting. Uh, I'm I am not by any stretch of the imagination, um, you know, one of the most tech savvy people out there. Uh, I may or may not have had to ask my babysitter to teach me Instagram um, live. So if that's any indication, <laughs> but that's something that I think is really important is that if that's not a strong area for you, um, think about could you mentor somebody who's younger and maybe help them with some with some stuff and they could give you some crash courses on the technology. What a great way to leverage each other's services, you know, and expertise. OK, Rasha asked, what's a digital business card? Really interesting. So, you know, there's your paper um, uh, business card, but you can also give more of a digital one. And I don't know if I've written an article about it for this company. I know I did it for uh, the ladders quite a while ago. Um, but if you literally Google digital business card or digital business card alternatives, you will find a slew of apps and websites where you can basically create um, a virtual business card. Um, it works a few different ways. One, you can just send it to somebody, but it also worked really well when you were in, a, in, in an in-person setting because you could actually send it to them. Um, so um, something to keep in mind. Um, is it as important? It would be, I guess it would be useful for something like an event like this. So I think it's definitely worth looking into. Um, but I personally have never used them, if that's if that's any indication. Um, I'd love to know how I can ask, Santiago asks, I'd love to know how can I ask for someone the skills necessary to work at the company? Okay, I think that's an interesting one. So when it comes to skills to work at their company, I think you have to put it into two buckets, right? There's 
um, the hard skills that are required to do the job, and that's going to be very job specific. Then there's going to be more of the softer skill set that maybe that company prioritizes. Um, when Top Resume did a study um, it, this past fall and asked what skills were have taken on more importance since the pandemic began. Um, it's the stuff that you would assume. It was, um, you know, being flexible, adapting, uh, communi strong communication, you know, things of that nature. Um, being a problem solver, being a creative problem solver. Those were the things that kind of bubbled up to the top. There were there were five altogether. Um, those I think we're seeing across the board because people are saying, how can you? Goals are going to change. Things keep changing. The The way we're doing business is going to continue to evolve as a result of what's gone on. Um, so the skills that will allow people to adapt to, to a new environment and kind of make it work whenever that we're seeing is kind of universally important. But if you're really interested in what skills it takes for a particular company, it sounds like you're more asking about almost the corporate culture. What are the what are the softer skill sets they value most, whether it's a commitment to the customers, whether it's communication, whatever it might be. So if you are talking to somebody who works for a particular company that you really value, instead of saying, well, what skills are necessary? Because that's not very, you know, that's, that's very job specific. If it's really, if you're talking about a company, it's what does your company value in its employees? What does it look for? How would you describe the culture? What types of people thrive here or are successful here and what types are not? Um, if you could describe the company in three words, what would you use? Um, you know, if, if it didn't matter what job I took here, what skills would be most valued for any role at the company? Those might be other ways to ask something like that. But also keep in mind, some of that information you can 100% find online. Um, from RD. What about privacy in a job search? How to balance posting, contact info, and negative attention from posting online? That's a really good call, and I would assume maybe that you're also employed. I think that there's two parts to that. One, of course, um, you don't want to rant about your job search, and I do mean rant as in negatively posting about your job search versus I'm out and I'm looking for these types of opportunities if you know of any two very different ways. But if you are currently employed and you are looking for work, or um, you know you're looking to make a radical change. It's you know you can't change your LinkedIn profile overnight without raising some big red flags to your company. And so yes, you do have to be a bit more careful. Um, I would 100% err on the side of caution. Really work within your network as much as possible. Go to events, but maybe you're not broadcasting as much. Maybe you are not branding yourself as much at them. You are quietly listening and engaging and asking questions, but not necessarily in Clubhouse putting yourself in the speaker spot. Uh, on a positive note, you can see who's at the events, and so you can always be careful that way. Um, and so one, a couple things to keep in mind is when you're applying for jobs, you know, it's not in most people's best interest to share if you're applying for a competitor's job, that sort of thing. So I wouldn't be as concerned about that. The recruiter has just as much to lose as, as you do. Other things when it comes to privacy is that, again, do a, run a search on your name and just see what's out there about you and decide how much you want to put out there. Um, but if you are trying to run a confidential search, don't use your work email for anything. Do not sign up for one of these events. Do not do not use an app. Make sure whatever you're using is not company property and is not your company email address. Okay, Mike, any templates or examples of effective ways to cold network without sounding slimy? Yes, Mike, thank you for this question. Love it. I actually think I added one more slide to this presentation, even though I'm not, um, I didn't plan to use it. There we go. Um, so these are networking subject lines, and this is kind of when it's more of a cold, cold mess, a uh, cold no. The one thing I'll put out there is that if you notice in almost every um, subject line, I'm referring to some sort of connection of sorts. We went to the same school, so I'm saying, you know, we were both Marist Red Foxes. Um, we work in a similar function or a similar industry. We have a mutual acquaintance. Uh, you know, I'm trying to make it, I'm trying to make sure they know what it's about. Um, there is some content on our site. Um, and I have a really old email or article. Bear with me. Let me see if I can find it real quick. 
begging. Sorry, guys, I'm literally typing this out right now. Okay, so I have a really old article. Let me just make sure it's still up and running because I put, I, okay, I like this one here. It, it's on the older side, but I think it's valid. So I'm gonna pop it into the chat and send it to everybody. But this article actually gives some templates for um, reaching out to individuals, either a friend of a friend. There's also one for if you're reaching out to a specific individual. Take a look at that one. Um, and then uh, I will try and look, because I know there was another article that was really good that gave some great advice that was specifically about cold calling. I personally hate cold calling. <laughs> and in cold emailing, I always get a little uh, about it. But I think the most important thing is, A, be respectful of people's time, have a clear ask, and whenever possible, try and show why why it's worth their time to talk to you. Um, and it's always easier if you can find some common connection. From Maria, I've applied for a job and have already had um, my screening HR call. I was told I will be contacted in the next round. I have a friend who has a contact with the CFO who may be part of the interview process round. He asked if I wanted him to connect us now. Since I'm already in the queue for more interviews, is it weird to have a networking meeting with the CEO? I say no. 100%. Get in there because um, the CFO might be able to, to push move things forward. So if your friend is willing to make that introduction, 100%, just be kind of clear as to what you're trying to get out of that conversation. Um, I think it's, um, you know, I would definitely go into it as I'm already um, looking at roles of your company. I've actually started interviewing. I would love, you know, I think what I would do is I would approach it with the CFO as, um, really excited about this opportunity. I've started talking to so-and-so at your company in the interview rounds, but I'd love to get from your perspective, what's it like working here? What do you enjoy about it? What does this company value most? Um, you know, who's the best fit, that sort of thing. Go for those pearls of wisdom and use it as a fact-finding mission so that you can then also kind of come back to him or her and show that CFO, oh, this is how I fit in. This is how that would work. Um, this is why I think I would be a good fit for this company so that if that person has any any, any clout in, in moving that decision-making process along, your name won't get lost. Rachel says, what are your thoughts about the impact of social media on productivity? Lots of successful people say they're better off without social media. What are your thoughts on this? That is a very good question. I think you have to time box it and you cannot be on every social media platform or you will never get any work done. Uh, I think you have to balance. It's so easy to get lost in the tunnel on TikTok and, and, and Instagram and uh, Twitter and Facebook. And I find myself where I'm like, oh, I go to check this and then 20 minutes have passed and I've completely lost track of time or hour has passed. I think you have to be really clear about setting limits for yourself. Just as if, you know, as a parent, you try and set some screen time restrictions, oh, COVID, whatever. Um, I think it's important to try and time box that information and say, I will only check it in the morning. I don't commute anymore, but maybe that half an hour while I'm drinking my coffee or tea before I start my day, that's when I get to scroll. Or I'm only gonna, you know, really do it at night for fun. Or if it's really part of my job search strategy, I will block off half hour of my lunch hour or something along those lines. Um, with uh, to, to do those activities, but, you know, put it on your calendar. I know it's so low tech, but literally chunk off your time. Give yourself a start and end time and leave it at that. Also, uh, I've learned that some of the social media uh, channels, I turn off the, the app or I turn off the notifications on the app so I can't get drawn into it with my phone dinging while I'm trying to get other things done. Um, James, how do you suggest dealing with age discrimination? Oh, it's a big one. I think there are a few people that ask this. Um, one, yeah, I, I mean, it exists and there's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. I will never say that it doesn't because I know it's there. Um, but when it comes to age discrimination, a few things that I would put out there is seek like-minded individuals in the sense of seek, I'm just going to move this back to something, um, that for you guys to look at. Um, when it comes to when it comes to networking in particular, A, remember you actually have a lot of value to give 
even when you are asking for help when it comes to networking, because you have so much experience. You've seen so many different things. You may have had multiple chapters to your career at this point. And that said, that those insights and that that wisdom, that they call it pearls of wisdom for a reason, right? So leverage that. I would actually say um, a two-pronged strategy. One, um, start networking or partnering with those who are more junior in the field that that you're a part of because they will open you up to other opportunities. They may help you with new technology, things of that nature. And then on the flip side, you can offer them, you know, your pearls of wisdom. The other thing is identify groups where age is not a factor. AARP, which uh, Top Resume does have a relationship with, I know they do a ton of networking events. It really is. They have a whole career section these days. That's why we're partnered with them. Uh, they do their own live events. I mean, I'm, I'm recording an event with them on, on December 7th, or December, <laughs> June 7th. So I know they're doing a lot of things, but they also have a bunch of, of uh, you know, d virtual events that they create for smaller groups. So leverage the groups and the networking opportunities where age is less likely to be a factor. I will say beyond the technology barrier and being concerned about leveraging technology, um, the digital world actually works to your advantage because you can really present yourself how you want to be presented. I think the biggest thing is also focusing on when you're writing your resume or CV, when you're updating your LinkedIn profile, you don't need to share your entire history. You need to share the most relevant parts of your history and how they relate to what you're looking to do now or next. And also really focus on the most recent 10 to 15 years. I know you may have done some really cool things 30 years ago, but you need to be able to provide more recent examples of your skills and experience and projects that relate to what in qualifications that relate to what you're you're pursuing now. And I think that's really important to keep in mind. Um, you don't need to tell them you have 30 years of experience. If they're looking for 10 to 15, you can say, I have more than I, I have 15 plus years of experience and leave it at that. Um, so I think really when it comes to the personal branding side of, of the networking or even just the job search, so your resume, your LinkedIn profile, all those things, don't focus on the age as much. Don't focus on the number. Focus on the value you bring to the table and focus on the qualifications that are most relevant today. And really, those are your talking points. That's what you're highlighting. It's you're asking for this. Here's how I meet those. And here's how I know that. And also, one thing to keep in mind, you have a more extensive network. Even if you feel that a lot of people have maybe retired or that sort of thing or moved to other industries, keep in mind, you still have a very extensive network. Just because they retired doesn't mean they don't have friends and family and have kept in touch with former contacts that could be valuable to you. So that's my big getting on my... Um, the, the other two events that we, we asked people about were changing careers and combating age discrimination. So I have a feeling we'll be doing both of those events in the not so distant future. So just keep an eye out for those. Um, oh, how do you deal? So we're at, okay, so I'm going to do 10 more minutes. Uh, how do you deal? Emily says, how do you deal with not hearing back from companies? You got all the way through their process and haven't had an offer or a decline in weeks. I hate that. It's called ghosting. I hate it, hate it, hate it. I wish I could change it. Here's what I would do. If it seemed like everything was going really well and you haven't heard back, A, give them the benefit of the doubt. Who knows? Maybe someone got COVID. I, I was in the middle of talking to a school administrator and needed her to, and for my child and suddenly like couldn't get a hold of her. And then finally somebody said, oh yeah, she's out. She has COVID. I had no idea. I felt awful. You know her. Um, so you never know what's going on. So A, give them the benefit of the doubt. I would certainly reach out to your primary points of contact at the company. So whoever was orchestrating your interviews um, and the last person that you had, you know, a meaningful conversation with, I would reach out to both of those people. And I would probably reach out once a week for four to six weeks until, you know, unless somebody comes back to you and says, thanks, but no thanks, just to check in. And then, of course, we hate that. We'd always love to add some more value with our communication. Whenever you're, you're in that process, you kind of never... The idea is you never just want to call and be like, so just want to check in. You're always trying to look for that, that one little thing. So maybe it's 
you saw something about their company online and you wanted to congratulate them or, um, you know, during the small talk with one of these people, you learned something about them and you have a shared interest and you wanted to share a recommendation of some sort, or you remember that you didn't mention something during the interview process that you thought was really crucial. And when in checking in, you also wanted to kind of bring that point to their attention. So you're looking for little things. The other thing, and of course the flip side of all this is, if the company is ghosting you, if they're being very unresponsive, the, the question back is, do you want to work for them? I like to give everybody a solid pass because I know emails get lost, things get shuffled around, um, somebody could have left the company and, uh, and things fall through the cracks, of course. But also keep in mind, if it's, if it's consistent, is, is that really something you want to be involved in? So food, food for thought. Um, how can you change careers without having much experience in that field? Yeah, when you're changing careers, oftentimes you don't have experience. Maybe you have a little bit. So the first thing I do if you're looking at changing careers is identifying a few people who um, A, have changed careers, and B, work in the, the career that you now want to pursue. Both of those people will be, both of those types of people will be useful in different ways. The first, anyone who's made a career change can just help kind of mentally prepare you for what that may involve because some, some changes are slight and they're much easier than others. Some are much more radical changes. Um, another, th another, the other person, somebody who's actually in the field that you want to change to or you want to pivot to, you really want to talk to them and understand um, a, explain your experience and your strengths. What are the skills that you have? Why were you good at what you did before? What did you love about what you did before? And what didn't you really like? And really ask them, do you, do you see where my skill set could fit in? Or, you know, is there a way to, to leverage any of that? And more importantly, um, based on what I've told you about what I like and dislike, where, where could you see me moving? And what skills, what, what gaps would I need to fill to become a more attractive candidate? Does it mean learning a new technology, becoming more well-versed on a certain topic, building some projects on the side so I get some real experience? Um, I think that's always something worth putting out there. Um, so that's a good first step is identifying the changes um, or identifying the skill gaps um, and also the specific type of role or the first step within that career path that you should be taking because you may want to make a switch where you go from manager of this type of job to a manager of this type of job, but you might actually have to take a step down and build some foundational experience so that you can then pop up and ascend further. Nina says, what is the best way of getting hiring managers to respond to a LinkedIn in mail when you don't know them? What do you recommend doing building relations over time? I sometimes send, I love the idea of sending interesting articles. I think that's a great idea, Nina. Um, other things is if you can follow them, some people can be followed versus just connected to, I would follow them and see what are they posting and start interacting with any of their content. Same thing if you look and see if they're also on Twitter, look and see if this person has, has a larger social imprint because Twitter, anyone can follow, and maybe you can start interacting with them there as well. It's the idea of building some of that online rapport before um, you know trying to connect with them. Uh, I do think if you know of an event, that'd be great for them. If there's recommendations, if they, if they post something about what they're doing, either in their personal life or their professional life, and you can offer your two cents, or to your point, an article, or something along those lines, 100% do it. Uh, set up a Google News Alert for their name, for their company's name, so you can keep an eye on what's going on. And if anything pops up that gives you a reason to reach out and congratulate them or, you know, anything along those lines, 100% do it. Um, what should we do if we are unfortunately not selected? So we ask where we lacked or an area of improvement still get no response. Yeah, it's hard. If, you, if you're interviewing for a job, and you make a round and then they cut you, you should always ask, you know, you know, could you, is there anything else that could help me with future interviews um, or why I wasn't the right fit? It would be great if they all gave information. Sometimes they're afraid to write something because they're afraid of it being misconstrued for discrimination. Sometimes they just don't have the time or frankly, they don't care. It's, it's the, the, truth, unfortunately. Um, you actually, that's why you see a lot of recruiters become career coaches because they want to help people in the future and they don't have the time to do it with their current job. Um, if they don't get back to you, unfortunately, there's really nothing else you can do there. But what you might do is if you were 
in the interview and you thought it was going well and it didn't go well, there are reasons outside of your control. Maybe an internal candidate got the job. Maybe there was just somebody who was more qualified and they didn't tell you or something along those lines. But if you're maybe concerned that it's more about your interview style, I would suggest working with an interview coach. Do a mock interview and have someone give you objective feedback. So topinterview.com, you can go there and uh, request a mock interview either over the phone or via video where they will run you through a mock interview for either a job that you have interviewed for or a job that you ideally would like to be interviewing for. And they can help you identify some of those pitfalls. If that's not quite up your alley, then I'd record yourself, um, you know, going through a mock interview and kind of look back and see if there's anything that stands out to you. Um, We are just about out of time. So how do you mention a gap in your resume? So here's some really good news. We actually did a study uh, in September uh, where we asked employers if a substantial gap in employment is is as much of a red flag if it carries as much of a stigma now as it did before the pandemic. And the majority said, no, we get it. People are unemployed. We get it. There is a pandemic. There are a lot of reasons that people are unemployed and have been unemployed for quite a while. And God forbid you were unemployed going into the pandemic and then trying to find work on top of this now very crowded job market. They actually get it. So while I know you can become very fixated on it, it's not as big of a deal in the eyes of the employer and the recruiter. So put that aside. That said, if you do have a gap and it's not your current job, if it's a gap that was maybe just behind or something like that, there are a few things you can do. You can play with how you represent the dates. You can maybe just put the years instead of month year when you're when you're doing the, the um, tenure, the start and end dates of your job. Um, You can supplement and show what have you been doing with your time? Have you taken a course? Have you know anything like that? You can offer your services up depending on what you do for a living um, pro bono. Uh, So there's something called volunteer, or I'm sorry, skill based volunteer opportunities. I'm a big fan of these where basically nonprofit organizations, foundations will say, hey, we're looking for someone with this type of skill set to help us with something. If you have that skill set, this gives you an opportunity to actually apply your skills and do some work, even if you're not being paid for it. And then you can put that on on your resume or CV so that now you you have less of a gap. Um, And that's something you can do right now. Um, You can also try freelancing. And even if you're doing anything just for the money, if you you need the money, you're doing a gig job, whatever it is, even if it's not related to your career path, it might, we don't want it to take up a ton of space, but if you're doing it now, I say put it on there if it's going to lessen that gap, just to show that you are doing things other than searching for work and dealing with a pandemic. Um, So I hope that helps. Um, Thank you so much for all of you who have hung in there. I swear, y'all, someday I will make a presentation that ends so that there is Q&A time within the allotted time period. But thank you so much for all of you who hung in there and waited. Um, If you have any other questions, feel free to tweet them at me at Job Search Amanda, um, and I will try and get back to you on those. And then you will receive an email with this recording um, that also goes to an article, and we will try and include some more information um, in that article. So once again, thank you all so much. I really appreciate everybody coming and listening and, and for all of the amazing digital networking you did during this event. Uh, I hope it doesn't sound silly, but I'm so proud of all of you for putting yourselves out there. And I can't wait to hear um, the benefits that you reap from it. So thank you so much. Take care and I will see you later.